Check this out, guys. It looks like a scene straight from the end of times. Look at this. A terrifying scene in this Maryland neighborhood. This is insane. A towering inferno looming over homes. Videos from up close show its intensity. It all started when a tanker truck on a nearby highway overturned and exploded. One tanker truck hauling flammable liquid completely engulfed in flames. The powerful flames and heat damaging multiple homes and cars nearby. The smoke could be seen for miles, shutting down that highway in both directions for hours. This is a scary day. The driver of the truck did not survive, but authorities say no one else was hurt. It sounds like every fire truck and ambulance in this county is responding to it. Laura Harrison and her family live so close they heard the explosions from inside their home. It's just out of a movie. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Didn't know what it was. My eyes started burning and I was like, we're done. Get in the house. You could definitely feel the heat coming off it. You could smell it. It smelled like, like a gasoline. A month after that toxic train derailment in Ohio, we have this, an overturned gas tanker that outright exploded on a highway in Maryland, killing one person. And you remember the toxic train company, Norfolk Southern, right? Well, barely a month gone by and they've already added two more major accidents to their name. One is a collision with a dump truck in Cleveland that killed the conductor. And another was another derailment in Ohio, the same state as the previous toxic train derailment with people in hazmat suits all rushing to the scene. And this one, they they captured on video. Check this out. There has been another train derailment in Ohio, this time near Springfield, just one month after that devastating derailment and toxic spill 200 miles away in East Palestine. There was like a loud slam noise, and that's when I started noticing all the debris and all the gravel. And after that, when the carts start coming off the track and getting in a big pile, that's when I just got out of there and quit recording. In this latest train derailment, 20 cars went off the tracks a thousand feet from nearby homes. So according to the data, derailments across rail companies increased in recent years. I wonder if it's the fact that they have like one train conductor per like 150 cars now. I don't know. And you know what has decreased in all of these rail companies? Regard for their people. So according to this, the rail union actually warned Norfolk Southern about their safety issues way back before all of these train derailments happened. But did they listen? No. Nope. Instead, they had President Biden and Congress bail the railroad strike where the union workers could have actually aired their safety mistakes. And now the union is warning that they've been left without enough workers to install new rail safety measures. Meanwhile, probably even more deadly and toxic train derailments and collisions in America in the very near future. But what do you think, guys? How have you been feeling about the good old US of A lately? Drop me a quick comment down below and let me know what you think. Yup, stay safe out there, you guys. And always keep your friends and loved ones close. With this and Jerome Powell turning up the heat with those interest rate hikes, the stock market certainly is not doing too well. The Dow Jones just turned negative for 2023 and newbie investors are getting shaken up a little bit. But you know what? There are still plenty of good reasons why you should invest in stocks and diversify your income streams. Even during these times of uncertainty and crisis, even during a recession, all of that in today's video, so definitely stick with me till the end, guys. And if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below this video. It only takes about 15 seconds. So let's talk about that Maryland tanker explosion. Now, one person died after an overturned gas tanker carrying flammable liquids exploded on a highway in Frederick, Maryland. They said it also caused damage to nearby homes and vehicles. City officials had to advise residents to avoid the area. It was pretty serious as folks in the area talked about flames and smoke billowing into the air and the hazardous materials, which were in the line of gasoline and diesel fuel, almost flowing into the Mono Casey River in Frederick County. And remember guys, this is just one month after a freight train carrying hazardous chemicals derailed in East Palestine, Ohio, and ignited this days-long inferno spewing poisonous fumes into the air and killed thousands of fish. Six homes, five vehicles, they were all damaged with the tanker explosion fire. The fire spread to a nearby home that is now uninhabitable. Two adjoining homes also were slightly damaged by the heat of the fire, along with three cars. The mayor said that none of the tanker's hazardous materials entered the city's sewer system, but officials will continue to work with state investigators to make sure that there are no lasting impacts. Hmm. A little suspicious, what do you think? What else could they possibly be investigating here? I heard from some Maryland friends of mine who've lived there for 50 years. Apparently, they were rear-ended in 2018, right at this very stretch of road between Rosemont and 7th Street. The Maryland Transportation Department, along
along with the government officials, have been talking about widening the roads from two lanes to three or four lanes since we were kids. Now, apparently, it's all just been lip service and accidents just continue to happen over the decades on the stretch of road that's from Clarksburg to Thurmont. But let's hope and sincerely pray that they finally make the effort to actually take significant action on our old and dangerous highway system. Hit the like button if you guys agree. Another one in Cleveland. This one from the same company as the toxic train derailment in Ohio, Norfolk Southern. A Norfolk Southern conductor was struck and killed by a dump truck at a steelmaking facility in Cleveland, Ohio. The National Transportation Safety Board also announced that it was launching a special investigation into the company following multiple accidents involving Norfolk Southern dating back to December of 2021. Now, according to Norfolk Southern, officials believe that the conductor was struck by a dump truck as a Norfolk Southern train was moving through a crossing at the facility. The NTSB also noted five significant accidents involving Norfolk Southern over the last two years, with three of them occurring over the past few weeks. Most notably, you've got February 3rd's train derailment that was over in East Palestine, Ohio. Hundreds of residents were forced to evacuate for several days and crews later conducted a controlled release of toxic chemicals, including vinyl chloride, due to the risk of the derailment could cause an explosion. Some people say that they're being attacked and most people don't even realize it. All I can say is that it certainly feels like it because between this truck collision and the toxic train derailment, Norfolk Southern had another train derailment in Ohio. Norfolk Southern said in an email statement that the derailment of about 20 cars of a 212 car train, it happened as it was traveling southbound near Springfield. According to the company, quote, no hazardous materials are involved and there have been no reported injuries. Our teams are en route to the site to begin cleanup operations, end quote. But I wonder guys, if there aren't any hazardous materials involved, why do they send so many people in hazmat suits to the area then? Are they sharing all the details with us? U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown, a Democrat for Ohio, he said that he was not satisfied with the company's response to the latest derailment and questioned if the communities in Clark County could have been affected by any type of potential contaminants left in the mostly empty cars. In just the last five months, there have been four train derailments from Norfolk Southern. In case this happens to any of you guys near your area, always try to move upwind of any kind of chemical fire or spill and get as far upwind as you can. Better safe than sorry. Also, turn off your air conditioner or your heat if you're staying home. Keep your windows and your doors closed and keep your vehicle AC or heat off and windows closed if you happen to be driving through or driving upwind of the issue. Norfolk Southern is definitely showing a blatant disregard for safety rules and for their people. Apparently, six months before the toxic train derailment, a union representing Norfolk Southern employees in Ohio warned federal regulators that the railroad repeatedly disregarded its own safety rules for screening trains. A formal complaint to the Federal Railroad Administration alleged the railroad had disregarded internal company rules regarding trains hauling hazardous materials be stopped and inspected in certain cases where trackside sensors known as defect detectors aren't working properly. Those same sensors are a focus in the investigation into the February 3rd wreck. And now the Association of American Railroads has announced several key safety measures for freight rails in the wake of the Norfolk Southern derailments, including the derailments of approximately 1,000 new heat detectors, but a key union handling the construction work on lines says it lacks the workers to get the job done. The president of the Brotherhood of Railroad Signalmen, in charge of the hot box detector installations, says the massive wave of layoffs over the last three years have created a workload issue. Basically, they said, quote, we need more people. I've been in meetings with the Class I railroads, and I can tell you, they are attempting to hire. The problem is they are only retaining 40 to 50 percent. People are leaving during the training, end quote. So maybe they don't feel safe with what the companies have been showing them. As the numbers point out, derailments across rail companies increased in recent years. According to the data analysts, quote, there is concern that freight rail trains in the United States are becoming longer, heavier, and faster, while safety regulations have not been updated to meet such changes, end quote. Plus, you got the fact that many freight rail companies reduced their number of safety inspectors as a cost-cutting measure in 2020, and despite a rebound in cargo volumes, companies have not yet returned to the pre-pandemic staffing levels. Put it all together, quote, the margin of risk has gotten thinner for rail companies when transporting cargo, and the oversight needed to ensure such risk is managed remains insufficient. End quote. That's what happens when companies put investors first before their people and before the general safety of the public. Now, speaking of with this and the Fed pumping up interest rates, the stock market is definitely taking a beating. Stocks sold off and flew off the shelves after Fed chair Jerome Powell suggested that rates may need to go higher for longer, meaning a potentially larger rate hike at the 
central bank's next policy meeting. The sell-off even brought the Dow Jones Industrial Average for the stock market index into negative territory for 2023, down by about 0.9%. Bank stocks led the losses as investors feared more Fed rate hikes will tip the economy into a recession. Wells Fargo lost 4.7%. Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and JP Morgan Chase lost about 3% each. Mega cap tech stocks also tumbled with Apple, Alphabet, and Microsoft falling at least 1% each. So the question is, is investing in stocks still a good idea? Well, investing in stocks during times of crisis and uncertainty can be actually a smart move if you're willing to take on a little bit of risk, but here's why. So first, stocks can recover quickly. During times of crisis, the stock market can be volatile with prices going up and down at a neck break pace. But if you look at the charts throughout history, the stock market has always bounced back from crisis and uncertainty with stocks recovering and ultimately providing positive returns over the long term. And in times of crisis, some stocks may become undervalued, meaning that they are priced lower than their actual worth. So if you invest in undervalued stocks during a recession, you may be able to buy them at a significant discount. You see, stock prices, they don't always reflect the company's actual value. In fact, during a recession, the stock market can be irrational and overreact to negative news. This means that some company stocks may be undervalued or priced lower than what they should be based on their actual worth. Now, if you can identify the undervalued stocks and invest in those, you could potentially make a profit when the stock price rises as the crisis subsides. Not to mention, it wouldn't be a bad idea to diversify your portfolio, spreading your investment across multiple companies and industries. This can also help to reduce risk as the impact of a crisis on any one company or any one industry would have a smaller impact on your overall investment. Ultimately, stocks could be your hedge against inflation, as stocks tend to increase in value over time, keeping up with or even outpacing inflation. Now, this is the part where I can tell you that investing in stocks always comes with some risks, and it's crucial that you do your research and make informed decisions. During times of crisis, and uncertainty, it's especially important to invest wisely, diversify your portfolio, and avoid making impulsive decisions based on fear, greed, or even panic. Investing in stocks during a recession, it might seem counterintuitive, but it can actually be a very, very smart move. Now, another reason why investing in stocks, even as a beginner during a recession, it could be a good idea. And this is because of something called dollar cost averaging. So this is when you invest a fixed amount of money at a regular interval, regardless of the stock price. Now, when the stock price is low, you'll be able to buy more shares with your fixed amount of money. And then when the stock price goes up, you'll be investing at the same fixed amount, but you'll be buying fewer shares. So this can kind of smooth out the ups and the downs of the stock market and give you a better return over the long term. So yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions or if you want to learn more about which stocks to go with right now. Our comment section is always open, you guys. Now, of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also tap that notification bell for your daily dose of the truth and so that you do not miss out on any of my future updates. But there you go, guys. As always, another important U.S. update and daily news report for the books. The tanker literally blowing up in Maryland, plus more collisions and derailments coming from Norfolk Southern. Safety is definitely a concern. We also talked about stock market investing and why it is still a good idea even during times of uncertainty, even during a recession, even as a stock market investor, as a beginner, it is still a good time to invest during a recession. In my next video, more news on Capitol Hill and what Biden's up to, plus this big Fed meeting that is about to happen. Make sure you guys catch that one, but for now, appreciate you guys watching. Please be kind to one another and I'll see you in the next one.